Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. I'm Alexa Dat, and this is our Hall of Fame edition as we are going to head to Cooperstown in just a little bit and welcome newest Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman here inside the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. The best part about the show is that you, the fan, get to ask our special guest your questions. There are two ways to do that, so I just want to remind you how to do that. You can click the button below to sign in or sign up, and you can ask Trevor Hoffman your question live, get some FaceTime with the new Hall of Famer, or you can hit us up on Twitter using hashtag chatting cage. That way we can see your question and get it on here on the show. All right, let's head on out to Cooperstown and go ahead and welcome Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman to the show. Trevor, first of all, thanks so much for joining us and uh, Hall of Famer, how's that sound? Alexa, thanks for having me. This is great. Um, the title of Hall of Famer is pretty astounding. <laughs> I, I love it. it uh, it's going to take a while to get used to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we jump in here, with our questions from our fans, Noah Clark says, was the experience of being inducted yesterday into the Hall of Fame everything that you hoped and dreamed it would be? And more. Um, it was absolutely an amazing event. All the Hall of Famers couldn't have been more welcoming of all of us. And uh, until you're in that moment, you're not quite sure how you're going to react or what kind of emotions are going to come over you. And it was amazing to see 50-plus thousand people out there, your family sitting in front of you, and then uh, to get to honor those that were important for you to be there was great. Yeah, and having your former teammates there and the fact that you were able to honor them and have them stand up and be recognized, what a cool moment all around. We've got another fan question here. Coach Kaminsky said, how did you feel when you saw your Hall of Fame plaque there as it was displayed to you up there on the stage? I was overwhelmed at the weight of the uh, the bronze face. It, uh, <laughs> it has such uh, girth to it. And, but I thought then I had a chance to just meet the uh, curator for it. And I'm telling you what, I thought the details, the eyes, the chin, the, the, the little bit of grizzle in between the eyes was done perfectly. And I uh, couldn't be more proud of it. Yeah, I think it looked a lot like you. I think they did a really good job. All right, we got a fan <laughs> here in the Edward Jones chatting cage who wants to talk to you. Hey, what's your name and what's your question for Trevor? Hey, Trevor, uh, this is Donnie from uh, New Jersey. How's it going? I'm good, Donnie. How are you? Going good. Uh, first off, congrats on the induction. And uh, I just wanted to say, Thank um, you. I just kind of wanted to know, like, what your pregame routine was like. Obviously, certain days you knew when you were hot and when you were cold. But uh, what was it like, like, leading up to the games on days that you kind of thought you were going to pitch? Yeah, I tried to make it as normal as possible on a day-in, day-out basis so that I had my certain checkpoints that I could rely upon. Um, obviously did a little bit of homework on the, the lineup and what I could, it would look like at some given time um, and just trust the process. I love the fact that uh, as a former infielder, I got to play every day and being in the bullpen uh, as a relief pitcher and a closer, I was ready to go every day. And so it, uh, it was a nice marriage. Trevor, I mentioned that you had a bunch of former teammates up there with you in Cooperstown. You also had your mentor and friend, Bruce Bochy, who skipped the Giants game in order to be there with you. Uh, A. Flanagan 77 on Twitter wants to know how special that was for you. Yeah, unprecedented is the word that I heard a lot of. Uh, there's never been a manager, a city manager outside of a Hall of Famer that's been able to come back. And uh, it shows the true class and respect that he has for his former players to make it back here to Cooperstown. I mean, a red eye, 3,000 miles to do something like that for me and, and Tram being a part of his staff was overwhelming. Uh, we had a chance to visit last night and yesterday evening. Uh, I know he's heading back because the uh, Giants are playing uh, the Padres, so uh, I'm glad he's only going to miss one game. Uh, I told him I thought it was a little bit of a uh, precursor. He's, he's just kind of taking a look, uh, doing a scouting report for when he's going to be up there. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. we got another fan here who uh, has an interesting item with him. What do you got there with you? What's your name and what's your question for Trevor? Uh, my name is Chris. I'm originally from San Diego. My mom sent me my Trevor Hoffman bobblehead, so I have uh, him here with me today. Uh, first off, Trevor, congratulations. What a proud day for you and your family and all of us Padres fans all around the country. Um, it doesn't happen very often for us, and it means a lot to see you up there. You've always been a guy with such class, and, and, uh, and you've always represented us well, so thank you for that. Quick story. In 1998, I won a contest with my father uh, on a radio station in San Diego, and they sent us to New York for the World Series. And we were so excited that we showed up to the Players Hotel uh, at the Grand Hyatt. And when we saw you walk through the door, we put on Hell's Bells on the boombox, and uh, you quickly tried to find the off button and uh, politely told us that uh, that's only for game time. But we were so excited. That was just a match for, for everyone involved. Um, and my question for you, uh, Trevor, is this. 
Now, uh, you've always had a tremendous head of lettuce, uh, and if Major League Baseball had a hair of fame, they wouldn't have made you wait. Uh, they would have gotten you in first ballot like you should have been uh, this time around. But uh, my question for you is, barber or salon? And also, where do you come down on uh, the Padres' colors uh, for the future? I know they're going to be maybe redesigning. There's some rumblings of that. So where, what, what do you like? Well, first off, thanks for sharing so many great memories that you've had as a Padre fan. Um, 98 was obviously something special. I might have been a little over the top with not wanting to hear Hell's Bells, but uh, <laughs> I think that's great. Um, honestly, the hair has kind of done a few different things. I appreciate that. I try and keep it down so it doesn't blow around in the wind too much. Uh, college days, it was high and tight with a flat top, but the alleys are getting a little bit deeper. So if I add a little bit in the back, it kind of takes the focus away from the front. But uh, I'm okay with the colors. I think the brown and yellow is something that's probably going to come back. I think they'll do it tastefully. Um, I'm a little partial to the orange and blue that we played in with the pinstripes. Um, it was kind of it stood out. That you knew you were looking at a Padre uh, uniform. So I know that uh, whatever we wear, we'll have a lot of great fans that will be cheering us on and uh, couldn't be more proud of that. Hey, Trevor, speaking of Hell's Bells, Chelsea619 wants to know how that became your intro music. Good question. Um, Eric Meyer and Chip Bowers in the entertainment uh, department said, you know what, you're kind of coming out to a bunch of random stuff that really doesn't have a lot of energy. Um, we have this song by ACDC that might be uh, a little bit more on par with what we're looking for. Uh, I think Dr. Charles Steinberg at the time was uh, part of the, the management team, and he's going, we need to create a little bit something in regards to the Major League, the movie with Charlie Sheen. And uh, I think the first time they played it in the middle of season 98, the fans were a little bit taken back by the first bell, but then immediately embraced it. And uh, it really became larger than life and, and a much uh, bigger entity than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, and follows you into the Hall of Fame. Pretty cool to hear that. Uh, Brian <laughs> Kapner wants to know what the weekend was like overall, meeting all of these Hall of Famers. you got 50-plus Hall of Famers sitting behind you on that stage while you were giving your speech. Yeah, it's a pretty daunting uh, uh, situation. You're looking out at 50,000 people, like I mentioned before, but uh, the pressure of doing right by the guys behind you, I think, was equally as important. So, uh, honestly, it couldn't have been more uh, engaging, more complimentary, and, and more welcoming to uh, the six of us that were inducted yesterday, along with Bob and Sheldon. Um, it's such an amazing group, an amazing class of ball player, people that I emulated, people that I looked up to, and uh, when your heroes actually meet the standards that you thought they would be is, is something incredible. Trevor, that leads us to our EDJ question of the day. Did you ever think that you would go from being drafted as a shortstop to 601 saves to being enshrined in Cooperstown? I think I probably would have been uh, incarcerated had I thought <laughs> something like that a long time ago. So, uh, I mean, you, you, you want to dream. I think it's important to dream big. Um, and then to try and fulfill those type of dreams is about hard work and keeping your uh, things in check. And so um, you don't think about getting here, but you want to prepare like you're going to, and hopefully one day you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one of your last lines there in the speech was about uh, how hard work pays off. Pretty cool mm -hmm. that you were able to end it with uh, you know, such an important message for younger kids out there. Speaking of younger kids, we got a fan here in the Edward Jones chat in case she wants to talk to you. Hey, what's your name? What's your question for Trevor? Hello, Mr. Hoffman. Congratulations on being inducted into Cooperstown yesterday. I am Daniel from South Jersey, and my question for you is, what is the best batter that you have ever faced during your career? Yeah, the best batter, unfortunately, isn't good for me because they're doing a lot of, a lot of not, not nice things. Uh, <laughs> Todd Helton was a guy that uh, I would imagine will one day be in, in the Hall of Fame, which will help uh, my credit, but uh, – he was a tough out. He had the ability to adjust pitch to pitch, not just at bat to at bat. We had a lot of matchups being in the National League West together, uh, he being a, a Colorado Rocky and myself in San Diego. And so he, he caused me a lot of gray hair. I, I do a little just for men to kind of get rid of it now, but uh, <laughs> he certainly was a guy that was a thorn in my side. You're like a walking hair commercial. It's unbelievable. Uh, pretty cool. Yeah, you, you need to get an endorsement dealer or something going on here. Uh, all right, as we hop back on Twitter here in the Edward Jones chat and cage, Pat O'Hara94 says, did you ever think that learning your changeup would be such a defining pitch for you in your career? You know, I, don't, I didn't think so. You know, obviously being able to move towards the back end of the bullpen, uh, some of the thoughts that I had, especially some of the examples I had, in baseball with Rob Dibble in Cincinnati when I was a minor leaguer and Brian Harvey in Florida when I got traded over there. Um, devastating fastballs and out pitches with like split fingers. And so 
you're a little bit crazy to think about going into a ball game with a BB gun and trying to get people out with a 75 mile an hour pitch. But sometimes it was more devastating to see guys get frustrated trying to swing at it and and uh, not be excited about having to come up to the plate. So uh, I was happy that it worked out. I was able to work a, a distance between the fastball and the changeup that uh, had some success. Kind of along those lines, Max Lewis 51 says, "What do you remember most about your 500th and 600th career save?" Uh, really the fact that I was able to secure a win for our team. Uh, my teammates um, celebrated with me by charging the, the field, and uh, I don't think they realized how heavy I was because of both instances they picked me up, and so it took some strong guys to get me up over their shoulders. Uh, but we went in, we celebrated. It was awesome to uh, get the called strike on the outer corner on, on Russell Martin and obviously the ground ball double play uh, or the ground ball to Craig Council at short in Milwaukee was great. All right, heading over to a fan now in the Edward Jones chatting cage. Hey, what is your name and what is your question for Trevor? Hi, Trevor. Congratulations on getting inducted into Cooperstown. I was wondering if there was any significance you. in your jersey number, 51. There is. Thanks for asking that. Um, growing up in uh, Orange County, California, went to Savannah High School, and our, team, our family number kind of was 15. My brothers wore 15 when they played basketball. They wore it in baseball for a few years before they, they changed it. And so when I got into professional baseball, I had a chance to wear the number 15. And when I got to the big leagues with the Florida Marlins, uh, my manager, Renee Latchman, wore number 15. So I said, you know what, why not just flip it around and use the number 51? Um, and it worked. It, it uh, felt comfortable when I, when I put it on. I got a chance to wear it over in San Diego after a, a few games with 34. Um, but it's amazing how a number can feel so comfortable. Pretty incredible. Hey, we're also here on Facebook in the Edward Jones chatting cage. Joel Shepard is watching us here on Facebook. Hey, Joel. Uh, Joel wants to know, if you could strike out one batter in any era, who would it be? Oh, wow. Um, I think Ted Williams for me would be something that would be pretty special. I had a chance to, to meet him and talk with him personally in San Diego, a, a gentleman being from San Diego. He was also a mentor of my brother's when he was with the Boston Red Sox and had a chance to, to talk baseball and talk hitting when he was a, a young uh, professional coming up with the Sox. So um, obviously his exploits are what they are. He was an amazing hitter. He um, got five years taken away for his military service, so his numbers could even be more grand. Um, but to be able to face Ted Williams, I know I probably wouldn't strike him out, but to be able to, to stare down the uh, – uh, that line to the catcher with him in the box would have been amazing. Ooh, you just gave me goosebumps. I think every baseball fan would want to see that. That would be pretty amazing. Uh, speaking of San Diego, it's you, Tony Gwen, and Dave Winfield in the Hall of Famer as Padres. Uh, Jacob Elwood9 wants to know what that means to you. Well, it's incredible. Uh, fortunately, Dave was able to be here um, yesterday for yesterday's inductions, and uh, obviously um, Tony was not. We lost him way too soon, and he was like a big brother to me. Um, I learned so much in his locker room uh, when I came over from Florida about being a true professional, going about your business the right way, and uh, admired how he always handled himself, not only in front of the camera, but with the fans of San Diego being his whole, there his whole career. So it would have been amazing to share that moment with him yesterday, and I know he could have helped me out with it, but uh, I know he's looking down very proud of his fellow Padres. We're also here on Facebook, like I mentioned, with Charles, who's watching. What's up, Charles? Wants to know uh, who are some of the great setup men that you've worked with that you want to shout out. Oh, that's awesome. I appreciate you thinking about those guys. Um, our bullpen coach now, D Doug Bockler, is somebody that uh, we shared a bullpen together with. And I love his personality. I love his humor. And he always kept things light. Uh, I had a chance to work with Scott Linebrink and Akinori Otsuka, who's also with the, the organization. But Scotty Linebrink was a kid from Texas that loved his Texas hard fastball and uh, never backed down from anybody. And so he was a blast to work with, and so was Aki. Um, Brian Bowringer, Donnie Wall were together with me in uh, the 98 run that we had. Uh, so I've been very, very lucky to have great people that have always been in front of me. Pretty incredible that you're giving credit to so many different people to make you the Hall of Famer that uh, you, you turned out to be. And it was awesome to see that yesterday. And uh, it just continues. It speaks a lot to your character. Hey, Trevor, we're going to ask you one more question here in the Edward Jones chat. And Katie, this one comes from Alan Meadows. Who's your favorite closer to watch in today's game? Yeah, Craig Kimbrell's my guy, man. I, like, I love watching him go about his business. He, he, I don't know how anybody even touches the baseball with uh, his devastating fastball, being able to pinpoint it. and his breaking ball that just falls off the table. But, and it's obvious, the numbers speak for themselves, the number of strikeouts per nine, the, the low walk rate, and the lack of hits that guys get. Um, he's in the middle of a fantastic career. He's up over 300 saves already. 
He surpassed uh, you know 500 plus innings with almost 800 800 punch outs. So he's really good at what he does. Uh, I, I love watching him, even though he's on the other coast. And we had a chance to be around him a little bit in San Diego and what he does for his bullpen and the camaraderie that he creates with his teammates. Uh, he's going to be here, no doubt, one day. Yeah, absolutely. On one of the best teams in baseball so far this year. We'll see how the rest of the season goes for him and uh, the postseason. But you better be sure that Trevor will be watching. Hey, Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman joining us here in the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Trevor, thank you so much. Alexa, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Congratulations again. And thank you to all the fans who were here on the Edward Jones Chat and Cage who chimed in with questions for Trevor. Make sure you check us out uh, all season long here on the Edward Jones Chat and Cage. we got more coming up a little bit later. Uh, but until then, Alexa Dat, we'll see you next time.